Hi there, welcome to Papercraft Panda. My name is Misty. I'm a book binder and through my blog and website, I teach people how to create their own books at home. Today I have a tutorial to show you how to create this romantic photo album. It's got a soft sort of ethereal look and feel to it um, and it's full of my own um, pictures because I ran across a bin of photos in my closet and it was so sad. One of them had a discoloration mark and I thought it's I'm wasting too much time. I need to get these into an album. So I just made my own. So this is extremely doable. You can handle it in two to three hours tops. It's an intermediate level tutorial. So if you wanna figure out how to make this book, go ahead and watch the tutorial. If this tutorial helps you out in any way, if you like what you see, please hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps Google understand that my stuff is worth sharing with other people and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Okay, I'm gonna let you get to it. Thanks so much for stopping by. Enjoy the video. In today's tutorial, I wanna show you how to make this soft romantic photo album. You can create it for yourself or for someone that you know. Either way, let's get started. So for today's tutorial, you're gonna need a few materials. Go ahead and pause it here, write all this stuff down, cut everything into size, and then come back. This here is a picture of the materials that I used for my album. Now let's jump into some of the tools. You're gonna to need your pretty standard tools, bone folder, ulfa knife, all that good stuff, but I actually wanna walk you through this. So these are my steel spacers, one inch, half an inch, a quarter inch and an eighth inch. They really help me get things done quickly. This is my 12 inch ruler, also handy. A tear bar from Stampin' Up! I've had for years <laughs> to create deckled edges. A good pair of scissors, of course. My retractable Ulfa knife. A large heavy duty awl. And a light duty six inch tapered awl. This is a Japanese screw punch so that we can make the holes for our binding. And these are the bits that go along with the screw punch in different sizes. I'll be using the three millimeter bit today. I've also got a large and a small paste brush, very handy to have. This awesome corner jig to help me do my corners correctly. A bone folder, of course. A pencil, always nice to have. Two clips, I'm using three quarter inch binder clips, a binding needle to sew with. And then I'm using these eyelets. They're not required, but I just think they add a little bit to it, so I'm putting them on my album. Finally, I've got a rubber brayer. It helps me press the boards when I'm gluing to get the air bubbles out and a clamp. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through my materials while I cut them really quick. First of all, we've got a green leather paper. I need this in two pieces, a small and a large. And then I've got this really nice looking Bodhi leaf paper. And I love the Bodhi leaf paper because it's made with a uh, Kozo. It's a mulberry base on Kozo. It gives it like this really soft crinkly feel and the leaves themselves are shaped like hearts. So why not? And then we've got for the inside end papers, I'm using this blush pink cardstock. I'll cut that into two pieces exactly the same size. Those are for the front and back cover. I'll set those aside. And then it's time for our book board. So for my book board, I'm actually using a piece of cardboard. There's two of them here, both nine by six, that come inside of a card making kit I get each month from a company called Stampin' Up. Well, when these card making kits come, I go ahead and create the cards, but then I have these boards left over and I really wanted to use them. So I have one full nine by six for the back cover here, and then I cut the other one into two pieces, a small one for the hinge and a medium one for the rest of the cover. Now for my paper, I'm using a 98 pound or 160 GSM Canson Mitientes drawing paper. I deckled those edges off camera so I wouldn't waste your time. And then I went ahead and cut these spacers. So when you're working with a photo album, every time you add memorabilia to the album, it expands it. When the album expands, it can put a lot of pressure on the spine and it would break it down over time. So in order to avoid some of that, we put something in between each of the sheets called a spacer. Normally, these spacers are actually built in. In other words, you take the sheet and you fold one end of it or you stack all the sheets together and you cut away a piece of every other sheet. Well, with the Canson Mitientes paper, I'm unable to do that. So I do have to create these spacers and add them in manually. To do this, I've actually cut down scraps of Canson Mitientes paper so that it's six inches tall, one and a half inches wide. And then I'm using a double-sided sticky tape to adhere them to the edge where the spine is at. So you can see I'm just adding the tape, removing the extra layer, laying down the spacer, and then I continue on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue doing that here. And when we're all done, you can actually see this is what the spacers look like once they've been added. So now that the spacers are in place, it's time for us to go ahead and help the book open properly. So this is really thick paper, it can be hard to bend. So I'm gonna actually score a line along the hinge mark that's gonna help the page pages open properly from right to left, just like that. 
Now, in order for it to do that, there's going to be a hinge in place, and that's what this smaller board is for. I've actually used a small board as a template to plan where my holes would be, and it's going to sit here on the edge, just like that. Let me stack this down. And the book is going to open like this right along that edge, and that's our hinge. So I'm going to go ahead and score a line along the hinge that's going to help these pages open on their own after we've sewn them in place. So I'm just going to take the score pal and I'm just going to do that. At the one and a half inch mark, just score them down. Okay, now that we're all done scoring, it's time for us to go ahead and stack these together and make a template for our sewing stations. Before I do that, I want to show you this illustration that I created just to give you an idea of where my sewing stations sit. So the first row only has two sewing stations. Both of them are a half an inch down or up respectively and a half an inch in from the spine. And then this second illustration shows you the second row of sewing stations. There are four total in this row, and you can see that mine are an inch down and two and a quarter inches down and up respectively. So once I get them marked on the paper, I can use my Japanese screw punch to go ahead and get the holes cleared. And then I'm gonna use that to punch holes in the rest of my paper. Now I am using the Canson paper. It's 98 pound, 160 GSM, which means that it's pretty thick. So I'm doing groups of three to five pages each. And you can't see, I'm not actually clamping this down to the table, but if it's your first time using a Japanese screw punch, I definitely recommend clamping the pages in place. You don't want these sewing stations to be out of alignment or it makes sewing really, really difficult. So take your time on this step, make sure that they're all in proper alignment, and then it's time to move on to creating our covers. Okay, so to create our covers, we're going to start with the back cover first. It's easiest. I've got my green leather paper, and I just want to assemble it here so you can see what we're going to be doing in these steps. We're going to lay the board on the green paper, glue it down, and then once that's glued in place, we'll add that pink end paper. So first, I'm going to apply the PVA to the back of the board using a large paste brush. Large paste brushes are important because they spread PVA evenly in a thin layer. A thick layer, you're going to have way too much water and it can warp. So big paste brushes are best for boards if you have one. Now I'm going to press that in place, use my brayer to get out all of those extra air bubbles, and I'm going to flip it over and just press the back. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and mark my corners, and then I'll be cutting the corners as well. Now, if you've never done this before, this is a similar process that I use when making a case for a case-bound book. So if you don't know how to do this, I actually have instructions and technical videos. I'm going to link to those below so you can run over there, watch those videos, get a hang for how this works, and then come back and finish making your cover. So as you can see, I'm actually folding in the top and bottom or head and tail flaps first. And then once those are done and pressed in place, I will do the left and right four edges. All right, with the top and bottom flaps turned in, it's time to do our left and right foredge. I'm going to add some glue and then zoom in here with the bone folder. Use the tip to just curve in that flap, just like that, removing excess glue. And then when you fold that flap over and press it in place, it's going to look something like this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process on the other side. Alright, now that all of our flaps are folded in, it's time for us to add our end paper. So the end paper is this blush pink sheet here, that's how it's going to look when we're done. So again, I'm going to use the large paste brush to apply a layer of PVA to the back of this pink sheet. And then once I get the PVA applied, I'm going to lay it down so that there's about an eighth of an inch around each edge. Using a bone folder and my brayer, I'm just pressing out those air bubbles. And now it's time for us to make our front cover. Okay, so the front cover has a few different moving parts, so I just want to show you what this looks like. I'm going to kind of piece it together. This is what the final product would look like. So in order to create that cover, we're going to remove the board, and I'm going to take this green piece of leather paper, and I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the right edge. Then I can lay the Bodhi leaf paper on top and connect them together. So this green leaf paper, or green leather paper, sorry, is face down, and I'm actually gluing the Bodhi paper on top so that I can see the deckled edge of the Bodhi paper laying over top of that green leather paper. It gets rid of those straight lines and gives it more of a soft feel. So now I'm going to add the smaller board. I'm, I'm just kind of putting that board in place so there's like a half an inch around each edge, and then I'm going to use my pencil to trace it in place. Apply some glue to the back of this board. 
And then when I lay it down and press out the air bubbles, I can use this, its new position as a guide for where I will put the larger board. So I've got my spacer on top. It's gonna to help me even these out. I'm putting some glue on the back of the bigger board, just like this, again with a large paste brush. And then I've marked a line for an eighth of an inch gap between the two boards for that hinge. And now we're ready to just press it in place, get rid of the air bubbles, and then remove any excess material that we need to. So I'm just gonna cut that away. It's so satisfying. <laughs> After folding in the flap, I want to use my bone folder to just define this hinge a little bit. So I'll flip it over and use the tip just to kind of press that green leather paper down into the gap. With both of those now turned in, it's time for us to go ahead and add our end paper. So this is what it's gonna look like when we're done. I'm just gonna repeat the process we did earlier, apply a layer of PVA to the back of this sheet, and then I will lay the sheet down on the board and press it in using my bone folder and my brayer. Okay, after using the rubber brayer, it's time for us to take the bone folder and just redefine the hinge. So now that the pink paper is in place, we have to define the hinge on this side. So I'm using a thick cardstock. I'm taking my time. I don't want that cardstock to tear. Now, when you're all done, go ahead and press these two boards between some heavy weight. It can be books or something like what I'm using here. And then it's time for us to move on to piercing our covers. Here's our covers. You're going to need a heavy duty awl and a light duty awl. Go ahead and take your two dry boards. We're gonna start with the front cover first. Lay your template on top of the front cover and use two binder clips to secure it in place. Okay, once the clamps are in place, you're gonna use your heavy duty awl to just pierce through each of these holes. The goal is to reach the self-healing mat on the other side. It leaves a pin prick just like this. And then you can use the pin prick as a guide to redefine the hole using the heavy awl afterward. Once we're all done with the heavy awl, take up your light duty awl and just redefine the hole and open it up a little bit more. I'm opening my holes up to an eighth of an inch or three millimeters. For the back cover, we're just gonna lay it on its face down, lay the template on top, position it in place, and then clamp it again with our binder clips. Once the clips are in place, you're just gonna repeat the steps you did earlier. First, you'll work with your heavy duty awl to create a hole. And then once the hole is in place, you can define that hole with your six inch light duty awl. With the sewing stations complete in our front and back covers, it's time for us to go ahead and sew the noble stitch. So before we get started, I just wanna show you this illustration of where the sewing stations are at and how I will be referring to them. I'm gonna go ahead and shrink it and put it up here in the corner, but you can see we start with the second station, leaving about four inches behind, wrap around the spine, back through the second station and out the front. And I'm taking care to just make sure my ribbon is you know, laying correctly. Then I'm gonna go into station three, wrap around the spine, and back into station three again. At this point, we're gonna move through station four from the back to the front. And then we're gonna wrap around the head and move back into station four again. At this point, we're gonna wrap around the spine, back into station four. This is station four A, by the way. And then we're gonna move into station 4B. Wrap around the head, come back into station 4B again. Wrap around the spine and back into 4B once more. And then from here, we're gonna go into station four 
and back through into station three. If you turn the book over, you see your next spot, move into station two. And from here, you're gonna move into station 1A. Wrap around the tail, back into 1A. Wrap around the spine, into 1A once again. And then you're gonna move from the back into 1B. From there, wrap around the tail, return to 1B. From here, wrap around the spine, return to 1B for the last time. And then into station 1A. From 1A, you're gonna to move to station two, tie a knot as close as you can to the opening or the hole, cut away excess thread or ribbon, and then use an awl to kind of stuff that knot down into the sewing station. Now, once the knot is in place, you can go ahead and begin your decorating. So mine, after a few decorations, looks something like this. I added a 100% pure silk ribbon, it's white, just to give it that soft looking feel. And then I created this tag using die cuts from cardstock that matches the inside papers and the outside papers. Now, once you start paging through, you can see that there's enough room below the photo to add captions. That's my husband and my daughter. <laughs> And there's my girls and I. Lots of room here on the side, and you've even got room there on the bottom. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I can't wait to see what you create. Alright, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. If you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. If possible, I can make a video for you in the future. So until next time, thank you for watching, and take care.